A few hours later, Yogiri and Danora arrived near the nearest town on foot. They wanted to enter the city quickly, but the guards there detained them briefly. Their language was vastly different from that of this world. Minutes passed, and the gate guards brought a man, Masahiko, to speak with them. Masahiko was genuinely annoyed and troubled by the situation because many groups were separated and visiting this city. In fact, anyone who enters this city has to pay an entrance fee. But Masahiko doesn't mind that, because he thinks Yogiri and Danora are sage candidates. Yogiri explained that he got separated from his group, and he and Danora were following them into the city. Yogiri also asked Masahiko for directions to the capital. However, Masahiko was indifferent to Yogiri's questions, as he were not obligated to help sage candidates. Upon hearing this, Yogiri decided to explore the city for clues, but Masahiko allowed Danora to stay at his residence for free. Only Danora. Of course, Danora was disgusted by the offer. <laughs> While Yogiri and Danora were exploring the city, they encountered a cat girl named Mirei. Mireyu guessed that they were sage candidates and she offered to help them for free if they were confused. Mireyu did this because she wanted to get close to the male sage candidates, hoping to charm them and be useful for her future. However, she clarified that she wouldn't interfere with a man who already had a girlfriend. After hearing this, Danora stated that she wasn't Yogiri's girlfriend. When Yogiri asked for Danora's opinion, she accepted Mireyu's offer as she wanted to explore a bit more before sunset. However, when night, Yogiri and Danora found themselves trapped by Mireyu. She had brought bandits to take their money and belongings, assuming that Yogiri and Danora were powerless sage candidates. The bandits planned to defeat them and sell them to slave traders for a substantial profit. Danora informed Mireyu that they were no match for Yogiri. But, according to information Mireyu received, Yogiri and Danora were not bestowed with gifts as sage candidates. Upon hearing this, Yogiri swiftly killed them one by one including Mireyu. とりあえず、後ろの奴らは死ね。お前は無能力者じゃ。あ、かな。左腕。あ、失敗した。半分じゃ多すぎたか。え、今何を <laughs> As Yogiri killed them in seconds, suddenly, the guards arrived and ordered them to stay in place. A female guard named Edelgard said that she and the guards had witnessed Yogiri's actions. In fact, Edelgard was investigating the mastermind behind this bandit group. However, Yogiri had already eliminated the bandits. Edelgard warned them that gift powers wouldn't affect her. The guards had protection bestowed by the Great Sage. A man accompanying Edelgard named Jorge stated that Yogiri and Danora had no gifts. Then Edelgard was shocked to hear this. Jorge had the ability to identify anyone's status, and he deemed the events of the night impossible for someone without a gift. Edelgard appeared furious, and Jorge apologized to Danora and Yogiri. After they left, Edelgard found one bandit still alive but blind. She took the bandit to Lane's residence for further examination. Lane was a vampire sage with an origin blood class. Anyone bound by blood to Lane would gain extraordinary physical strength. Hours passed, and Lane couldn't understand why the bandit's eyes remained blind, even after providing healing magic. Lane then decides to suck the bandit's blood and turn him into her blood descendant. But the bandit remains blind. After seeing results like this, Lane became curious about Yogiri's strength. Not long afterward, Lane's residence was attacked by a hero named Ayn. <laughs> On the other hand, Danora and Yogiri were checking into a large luxurious inn. Naturally, Danora was delighted, feeling as if she were in a palace. Yogiri then offers Danora to share a room with him, and this offer makes Danora confused. After seeing Danora's response, Yogiri decided to book a room next to hers. When Danora was in her room, she was confused and curious about why Yogiri made such an offer. In fact, Danora even thought that Yogiri might have feelings for her. However, Danora's expectations were shattered when she remembered Yogiri's words. <laughs>
Danora was surprised when a spirit suddenly appeared in front of her. She even thought that the spirit was her older sister's spirit. Of course, the spirit, named Makamoko Danora, was annoyed because Danora had mistaken her for her older sister. Makamoko had long been protecting Danora, but Danora was annoyed because the spirit did not appear when she was in danger. Makamoko explained that she was afraid to manifest herself because Yagiri was with Danora. Makamoko could be killed if she suddenly appeared in front of Yagiri. Therefore, Makamoko asked Danora to tell Yagiri about her existence, ensuring she could safely manifest in her presence. Makamoko also rejected the gift system. Danora was not unworthy of being strong, but Makamoko worried that Sion might be planning something. If the gift system succeeded with someone else, Sion could control that power if she wished. The lives of sage candidates were under her control. Makamoko also offered to teach Danora how to fight using the ancestral techniques of the Danora family. After hearing Makamoko's explanation, Danora realized that even spirits like Makamoko feared Yagiri's power. Danora also thought that, while trapped in the other world, she had always relied on Yagiri. So, Danora agreed to accept Makamoko's teachings and decided not to burden Yagiri continuously. The next day, Danora met Yagiri with a tired expression. Yagiri then introduced a female hotel employee named Celestina to Danora. Since the previous night, Celestina had been helping Yagiri find the whereabouts of their friends, how they got there, language translators, status concealment skills, etc. Celestina then provided train tickets for their journey to the capital. After that, Yogiri asked Celestina to store and manage his belongings. Some time later, Danora and Yogiri were on their way to the capital by train. Danora also introduced Makamoko to Yogiri, as promised the previous night. Yogiri then asked Danora to sit beside him, and shortly after, something happened there. It turned out that a battle was taking place between the sage Sentaro and an aggressor, the explorer. During the fight, Sentaro attacked in various directions, almost injuring the passengers. Worse, Sentaro intentionally killed some passengers, but Danora and Yogiri were not affected. Because of this, Sentaro became angry, as he expected them to praise and bow down to him. Anyone should do that when they see a sage passing by. Then, Yogiri unleashed his power on the foolish sage. Yagiri killed him according to his own rules. Then the aggressor approached them, stating that he had no intention of fighting against them. The aggressor offered assistance because they had eased his workload. Then, Yogiri inquired about how to return to their original world from the aggressor. The aggressor stated that he didn't know about that and only understood how to return to his own world. Yagiri then asked the aggressor to take him and Danora to the aggressor's world. However, the aggressor couldn't do it because it was highly impossible. Moreover, Yogiri's presence might pose a threat to the aggressor's world. Also, the human body did not have the power to withstand the energy in the time and space tunnel. After hearing the aggressor's explanation, Yogiri decided to leave the decision to Danora. If Danora wanted something, she could express it to the aggressor. Danora said that she couldn't decide, but suddenly, Makamoko appeared with a brilliant idea that wouldn't burden the aggressor. At night, Danora and Yogiri took a brief rest in a wooded area. Yogiri decided to walk because the train he was on had broken. He didn't want to get involved with the aggressor further, as it would be troublesome in the future. Then, Makamako appeared and gave something to Danora, a flexible item that could transform into anything, made from parts of the aggressor's robot. Danora was confused about why the item appeared suddenly without her carrying it. Makamoko explained that he intentionally disguised the item as Danora's bra and panties. On the other hand, Edelgard and Jorge were shocked to find Sintero dead without any visible wounds. At the same time, Lane visited Sion's residence to inquire about Danora and Yogiri. According to Lane, they used strange magic. Sion found it challenging to believe that they could defeat a sage like Sintero. Still, she knew that Sintero had been given the ability to ward off death magic in this world. Actually, Sion did not allow Lane to interfere in her affairs and the sage candidates. But this time, Sion would allow it if Lane could drive the aggressor out of this world. Then, Lane agreed to the deal because she couldn't let Yagiri slowly kill the sages. Lane immediately prepared forces in case of a future war. Sometime later, Danora and Yogiri arrived in a modern city named Hanabusa. Yogiri appeared tired from navigating the forest while protecting Danora from monster and bandit attacks. Of course, Danora was upset that Yogiri hadn't mentioned this from the beginning. But Yogiri didn't mind as long as he could protect her. 
Besides, Yogiri's power could be used limitlessly as he pleased. They then booked a room at a hotel there and encountered Tachibana Yuuki. Yuuki was one of the students who agreed to leave Danora, Yogiri, and two other students on the bus during a previous incident. Yuuki was grateful that Danora had arrived at the city safely. Danora asked, Why are you here? Weren't you with your friends? Yuuki explained that he intentionally didn't follow the group of students. According to Yuuki, the methods of leveling up other students were ineffective and inefficient. That night, the students were celebrating their success in completing the first mission, but Yuuki couldn't join them because of his dominator class. Other students had their own classes, each with unique problems. One student named Utori, with a consultant class, could analyze other classes. Utori advised Yuuki to make contracts with slaves to level up faster. The more slaves Yuuki obtained, the more benefits he would gain. His slaves would work against monsters, allowing Yuuki to relax without working hard. Due to this, Yuuki could enjoy the city and had acquired many sexy slave girls. Yuuki also wanted to recruit Danora as his slave. Of course, Danora felt disgusted and rejected Yuuki's invitation. Yuuki chatted and tried to persuade Danora in front of his slaves. He even offered himself to be Danora's lover. The slaves got angry as Danora seemed close to Yuuki. <laughs> On the other hand, Lane was fighting another aggressor named Kurayami. Lane struggled against Kurayami, a monster formed from many black particles. A few days later, Danara was truly bored staying continuously in the hotel room, while Yagiri had been sleeping in his room for three days. Danara planned to take a walk in the city, but she suddenly saw chaos outside. It turned out that the chaos was caused by the zombie subordinate of the Great Sage. Because of this, Danora abandoned her intention to leave the hotel. Danora was confused about the situation. Why were there zombies ruling in another world? Shortly after, someone was waiting for Danora to come out of her room. Makamoko sensed the evil aura of that person but couldn't see the figure. Danora immediately called Yagiri because she couldn't fight an invisible enemy. Yagiri, dreaming peacefully with his sister Asaka, woke up when Danora called him. After Danora informed him of the situation, Yogiri slowly approached Danora's room, checked the situation with his powers, and killed the person. Yogiri entered Danora's room and informed her that the person was targeting her. Then Danora was confused about the person's intentions. When Danora saw the corpse in front of her room, Danora realized she was Erika, Yuuki's slave girl. Because of this, Danora hurriedly packed her belongings to prevent Yuuki from going berserk. Yagiri was curious why Danora seemed so calm in this situation. Danora was different from her usual self. Danora explained that she had almost become accustomed to seeing such things since being with Yagiri. On the other hand, Yuuki was leveling up with his sexy slaves in a dungeon pyramid near the forest. However, Yuuki couldn't detect Erika's presence because the contract was broken. When he checked Erika's last memory recording, Yuuki couldn't understand what was happening to her and why she was in front of the hotel room. Yuuki suspected that Erika was secretly attacked by someone else. But a sexy slave named Euphemia said that Erika couldn't have died so easily because she was an assassin. Euphemia also guessed that Erika might have wanted to bring Danora to become Yuuki's slave. The worst case scenario was that Danora might be killed because she wasn't deemed worthy by Yuuki. Even though the slaves had contracts with their master, they could still act according to their own desires. Then, Yuuki decided to send two of his slaves, Riza and Chelsea, to capture Danora. Yuuki was sure that Danora would run away soon because she felt the threat from Erika. In the hotel, Riza immediately used ice magic on Danora and Yogiri to prevent them from escaping. However, Yogiri could still use his powers against the ice. He also broke Riza's magic staff with his powers. Riza then pulled out a small-sized magic staff from her chest, and Yogiri was fascinated after seeing it. <laughs> Chelsea began to surround them with her puppets, and Danora successfully defended against one of the puppet attacks. Of course, Yogiri was impressed because Danora could do that. Yagiri then killed Riza and stopped Chelsea's puppet attacks. As they headed to where Chelsea was, she cried, apologized, and begged for mercy. Chelsea didn't want to die. Well, this made them feel strange because they seemed to be the villains there. <laughs> Yuuki was a little annoyed because he still wanted to get Danora as his slave. Therefore, Yuuki controlled many flying cockroaches to guide them to a suitable place for an attack. 
Then, Danara felt disgusted and scared because she was facing flying cockroaches. Well, even though the flying cockroaches were cute and adorable in appearance, Danara then told Yogiri to kill the flying cockroaches. But Yogiri said that if he killed them, the cockroaches would fall on Danara's body. Well, Danara retracted her statement after hearing that. Danara was very angry at Yuuki because he had threatened her with flying cockroaches. On the other hand, Yuuki immediately used his skill to kill Yogiri with the flying cockroaches there. Yogiri sensed a very strong killing intent around him and quickly used his powers to kill Yuuki. Although Yuuki had been killed by Yagiri, the flying cockroaches were still there. Yagiri explained to Danora that the flying cockroaches might have become their own entities. Then, Yagiri held Danora's hand so they could quickly run away. On the other hand, Yuuki's slaves no longer had contracts with Yuuki and left him in the dungeon. But when Euphemia exited the dungeon, she found herself in a desert and met Lane there. It turned out that Kureyami was approaching a city soon and Lane immediately sucked Euphemia's blood to find out something. On the other hand, Danora and Yogiri successfully left the hotel, and then saw zombies attacking the city. The zombie leader is named Masayuki, a subordinate of Lane. As the city darkens under thick black clouds, Masayuki meets Ryota, the leader or supervisor of Hanabusa City. Masayuki carries out attacks like this under Lane's orders. Lane is the ruler of Hanabusa City. However, Ryota disagrees with the order because he has worked hard to build the city of Hanabusa. Nevertheless, Masayuki follows Lane's command and asks Ryota for the city's key. Then, Masayuki orders the zombies to stop attacking the residents. He announces that the residents must find Danora and Yagiri as soon as possible. After that, they should bring them to the city center square. Whether dead or alive, the residents must successfully carry out this order if they want to survive. Masayuki has locked the protective barrier of Hanabusa City, so Danora and Yagiri cannot leave the city. Upon hearing this, Danora is confused as they are targeted without clear reasons. Yagiri speculates that it's probably because he has killed many sages. Shortly after, some residents find Danora and Yagiri hiding in a small alley. One resident intends to kill them, but Yagiri immediately kills him, and the remaining residents flee. Danora thinks Yagiri is too ruthless for killing ordinary people, but Yagiri explains he only kills those with intentions to harm him. Then, Yagiri just realizes his mistake in judging the situation there. Due to this, Yagiri decides to approach Masayuki with Danora. Of course, Masayuki and Ryota are surprised by their decision. Masayuki believes Danora and Yagiri are sacrificing themselves for the people of Hanabusa City. Yagiri then intentionally asks Masayuki to release the city's protective barrier so they can leave. Yagiri will let Masayuki live if he complies with Yagiri's wishes. Masayuki is angered by this request and summons his undead forces to attack Yagiri. Masayuki and his forces consist of various types of undead. <laughs> Masayuki is shocked as his undead forces vanish instantly. He wonders why the undead, who are already dead, can die again. Yogiri answers that he also doesn't understand it but clarifies that anything in front of him can die in an instant. Yagiri decides who lives or dies, and others can form their own opinions about him. Meanwhile, Ryota, who has been silent from the start, states that he had no involvement in Masayuki's attack. Ryota introduces himself to Yagiri there. Masayuki immediately transforms his body to attack Yagiri. <laughs> Yagiri remarks that he is truly tired of waiting for an enemy who performs dramatic transformations like that. He approaches the frightened Ryota, who pleads not to be killed by Yagiri. Ryota claims he has no intention of doing anything to them. Yagiri explains that he only did it to protect Danora and himself. After Ryota calms down, he reveals that Lane ordered Masayuki to kill them. Ryota has never interfered in Sage Candidate matters, so he doesn't understand Lane's motives. Shortly after, Makamoko appears to inform Danora about the aura in Hanabusa City. The attitudes of the residents suddenly change as they head towards them. This is due to the manipulation of spirits by someone. Danora, protected by Makamoko, is unaffected by the manipulation. Yagiri realizes this and believes someone is testing his powers. Ryota tries to reactivate the city's protective key to neutralize the magic, but it doesn't work. Ryota suspects Lane is controlling the city.
On the other hand, it turns out Lane is indeed testing Yogiri's strength. Even Kureyami is deliberately directed to the city to face Yogiri directly. Anything in front of Kureyami will turn to sand when Kureyami passes through. Euphemia is now Lane's slave and advises Lane not to resist Yogiri. Yogiri is extremely dangerous, and his power surpasses all in the world. However, Lane continues with her plan and splits herself for the next phase. Lane has arranged her clones not to remember Yogiri's name. The clones also have no intention of killing anyone. Lane categorizes this as a disaster for Hanabusa City. She believes Yagiri cannot kill her under these conditions. The disaster will begin when Kureyami suddenly disappears due to Yagiri's attack. On the other hand, Yogiri tries to protect Danora and Ryota from the residents' attacks, but he cannot do it continuously. He cannot directly kill Lane as he doesn't know the connection's trail. Yogiri tells Danora that he has been in a similar situation before, a situation where someone tried various things to measure Yogiri's strength. Soon, Danora senses a dull aura around the city. Kureyami has reached the city and is advancing towards Danora and Yogiri. Yogiri senses something strange about this situation but still instantly kills Kureyami. Then, an anomaly occurs, and Yogiri quickly embraces Danora. <laughs> Danora is confused by the situation and thinks the red light comes from Kureyami. But Yogiri says he has already killed Kureyami. Yogiri thinks the red light is something separate from Kureyami. There's no specific target, it randomly attacks at high speed, seemingly aiming to destroy the city. Danora briefly changes the subject as Yogiri continues to lean against her breasts, with his hands embracing her. After Yogiri released his embrace, Danora wanted to say something about the red light. She saw that the red light seemed to take the form of a woman in a red dress diving from the black sky. Upon hearing this, Ryota suggested that the attack likely came from Lane's clones. Ryota is genuinely frustrated and doesn't understand Lane's true intentions. Nevertheless, Yogiri cannot attack Lane because the red light does not intend to attack him. However, Yogiri can stop the attack if Lane's clones are clearly visible to him. Upon hearing this, Ryota quickly opens the map of Hanabusa City with his power. He explains that Lane's clones are attacking different locations and won't attack the same place. So, Yogiri can be on guard in an area not yet attacked by Lane's clones. This way, Yogiri can counter-attack when one of the clones dives towards him. Danora will also accompany Yogiri because Makamoko has a good plan to protect them later. Then, Ryota quickly teleports them with his power, and after that, Ryota teleports elsewhere as soon as possible. After waiting for a few minutes, Danora sees Lane's clones targeting their location. Yogiri immediately grabs Danora's hand and attacks the clone. They successfully survive thanks to Danora's underwear made of the time-traveling aggressor material. On the other hand, Lane becomes more confused with Yogiri's power as he can kill vampire-type undead. Shortly after, Lane senses a strange power attacking her, and it's Yogiri's power. After Lane's body truly disappears from this world, another girl wakes up from a coffin. When the girl comes out of the coffin, she sees a hologram magic recording from a stone she holds. It's a recording of Lane stating that the girl is a copy owned by Lane. But the girl will not have Lane's memories and will live with a different personality. Lane has planned this to avoid attacks from Yagiri. <laughs> Some time passes, and Ryota has prepared a vehicle for Danora and Yagiri, who will depart for their next destination soon. He is very grateful to Danora and Yagiri for stopping the chaos in the city. Ryota doesn't care about the deceased Lane as he hasn't respected Lane for a long time. Then, Danora thanks Ryota for preparing the vehicle for her and Yagiri. After that, Danora approaches Yagiri because typically, it's the man who drives for the woman. Yagiri says he's very bad at driving like this, and there's a possibility of an accident if he drives the car. Upon hearing this, Danora becomes scared, and she insists on driving the car to ensure they arrive safely at their destination. At night, on the other hand, Ryoko is visited by a girl named Carol. Carol returns Ryoko's phone because its battery is almost run out. Ryoko expresses gratitude as she lost her phone a few days ago. Carol then admits that she was the one who stole Ryoko's phone back then. She wanted to see Yagiri's observation tool from Ryoko's phone. Unfortunately, Carol couldn't do it. Of course, Ryoko is suspicious of Carol's true intentions. Carol explains that Ryoko doesn't need to hide anything about Yagiri now. Carol just wants to monitor Yagiri through Ryoko's phone. Carol's organization actually has a satellite to observe Yogiri's activities at all times. But the satellite cannot operate in this world. 
Ryoko and Carol are girls sent by their respective organizations or institutions to monitor Yogiri. They know that Yogiri's power has been dangerous since they were on Earth. Shortly after, Ryoko's phone alarm goes off, indicating an important notification. <laughs> Huh? Hmm? So nah.